much like the rule of two in Star Wars lore, Battlefront 2 conjures up the image of two Sith Lords battling over control of its universe and its adoring fans. Electronic Arts, which published the last Battlefront, appears to have failed or at least been overtaken by the myth of what Star Wars Battlefront 2 should have been. I find your lack of faith disturbing. You'd have to be living under a rock or sleeping deep within an ancient and forgotten Sith temple to have missed the utter PR nightmare that has been the launch of Star Wars Battlefront 2. With governments around the world looking to crack down on a predatory gambling system so devious that only the Emperor himself could have devised it, people from all corners of the galaxy are getting involved in the rebellion. The first Death Star has been destroyed by a small rebel force, and it appears a new hope has risen for the gaming community as a whole. Will the incredible irony of this situation ensure that once again Anakin brings balance to the Force? With what started as one fan's tumultuous cry at the inability to play as one of the most iconic and arguably most important Sith and Jedi in the Star Wars universe, it appears that balance may soon be realized. I want to love DICE's Star Wars Battlefront 2. It has all the trappings of a wonderful, cinematic experience. And I've been waiting for the sequel to the ill-received Battlefront of 2015 since it was first announced, and eagerly I pre-ordered it on PlayStation 4. The hype was certainly real. John Boyega had written scathing criticisms of the first game, and with the sequel, he was brought on to ensure us the Battlefront 2 would not disappoint. It would be bigger and better than ever. It would have so many more maps and locations, and it was even said that it would be set throughout all of the eras of canonized Star Wars history. Above all else though, it would finally include a well-written story that would tie in with the new movie and let us experience Star Wars through the eyes of the Empire. I think I speak for the entire gaming community in saying that we were ecstatic at these new revelations. It was, however, a short-lived reassurance, as once players got access to the beta for the game, they soon realized that EA had set itself up as Chancellor, echoing his chilling message, I am the Senate. Microtransaction fears abounded, a once great republic crushed by the corruption of greed, we finally realized that all along a phantom menace had lurked in the shadows, orchestrating an order of betrayal. An EA spokesperson quickly admitted that the repeated accusations that Star Wars Battlefront 2 was now a pay-to-win experience were in fact hard to dodge. I played the beta on both PlayStation 4 and PC before deciding that I thought the PC community would in fact be large enough this time around to cancel my console pre-order. Sony, clearly a tool of the rising empire of microtransactions in this industry, controls a great position of power in the US, denying even pre-orders from being refunded months in advance. Left scarred by yet another blow of corporate greed I strengthened my resolve and determined that I would make the best of the situation by decrying their policy in public when I made a review of the game. The hyped up story turned out to be a lie, and while I wanted to avoid any sort of spoilers in my review, you should know that while the acting is mostly impeccable, the writing is atrocious drivel, and the biggest lie has to do with the promise of playing as the Empire. To say that I was disappointed would be an understatement of epic proportions. Incredibly predictable, the story is still worth playing through, but the collectibles should have been struck down in the initial talks. They are pointless, and in fact perhaps the worst excuse for collectibles seen in a very long time. No lore, nothing of any substance, just worthless filler and hardly worth the credits that are gingerly doled out in this game's single-player component. One highlight 
is that Battlefront 2 appears to confirm a theory that I actually had about Rey's parents. And I believe this information might be contained in a Star Wars game for the first time. Well, it seems unlike Disney to allow these revelations in a game rather than a show or a novel, Star Wars lore has been revealed all throughout a new comic series, and this game does make a strong case for its inclusion here. I won't spoil it, but I was pleasantly surprised to possibly have figured it out myself in advance. A constant sinking feeling while playing through any of Battlefront 2's diverse modes is that this deal keeps getting worse all the time. What was sacrificed in favor of the elimination of DLC and season passes is quickly made clear, and the way Liberty died here was through the thunderous applause of Wall Street investors who know nothing of gaming and only care about the size of your pocketbook. Visually, you will feel like you entered a portal and emerged within the very locations you know and love. Camino is an incredible standout here, offering up all the thrills of the lightning lit and rain drenched duel between Obi-Wan and the bounty hunter Jango Fett. I cannot begin to describe the awe that I felt when I first emerged on the narrow platforms of the beautifully designed cloning facility or I flew my starfighter over a hundred foot waves. Camino is so well realized, it took my breath away. Like everything in Star Wars Battlefront 2, limitations are quickly discovered, as most of the maps are incredibly linear, and they're small, offering you only a 10 second death timer if you wander too far out of their borders. This is beyond immersion breaking, and like Yoda, you will feel the sorrow of what has been murdered here in favor of not cloning the original masterpiece created in 2005. It is hard to talk about this new battlefront without reminiscing about the old. Gone are the 64 player battles, which having played the original this past week, still feel more massive and open. There are no systems and squad mechanics here, save for a force spawn system. It feels contrived and it only awards you double battle points, which are the new currency available to spend while playing Battlefront 2. A totally different currency from that spent in menus, battle points are a wonderful addition that for the most part appear to be well received. I love them and I would only change a few details about how they work. Another missing feature, which seems like the largest mode-based misstep, is that of Conquest. The fan favorite mode of Pandemic's original Battlefronts is nowhere to be found. Curiously removed, having been one of the standout modes of EA's last Battlefront, it feels very missed here. While the main mode available, Galactic Assault, has lore-based rotating objectives that do vary greatly depending on the map, they all start to feel like you're being funneled into kill boxes, with only a few exceptions. The best mode on the table, though, is hands down Starfighter Assault. Nothing feels more like Star Wars than piloting powerful fighters, interceptors, and bombers against Venator and Destroyer-class Goliaths. The objectives have even more variety than the other modes available, and every ship's controls, whether they're a standard ship or a hero, rivals that of the Rogue Squadron series, which Battlefront 2 assures us seriously needs an awakening of its own. While billed as the quintessential Star Wars experience, nothing in Battlefront 2 feels decidedly novel. As cannot be stated enough times, the visuals and sound design here are top notch, but I feel that was to be expected having been blown away at DICE's previous entry. The progression in Star Wars Battlefront is its biggest sin, and the reason that it has taken so much slack since its launch. Everything is balanced around star cards, and a loot crate system that feels far more sinister than most games to date, and it's being used in a Star Wars game of all things, as a cash grab. I've long felt that for me personally, 
The worst thing about microtransactions is their destruction of the deep lore of my favorite franchises. First, it was Lord of the Rings. And now Star Wars? What's next? Those are my two favorite universes. And it feels so heartbreaking to see the immersion-breaking system destroying that which I have long held so dear. The star card system was an okay addition in the previous game, and it's been expanded upon this time with a class-based twist. You get a very low amount of credits each match in Battlefront 2, making progression feel slow and unmemorable. I never felt like I was really accomplishing anything. The one trick that seems to help is buying only hero and starfighter crates, rather than the way overpriced trooper packs. Most of my crates have consisted of duplicates, and in my entire playthrough of the game, I've gotten maybe three or so rare cards. Assuming that one follows this purchase advice, the economy feels a little better. You amass crafting currency much quicker this way, allowing you to craft and upgrade what you want but you're insulted every time a new dawn emerges by a piddly 5 crafting parts and 125 credits. It is apparent at this time, after putting in over 73 hours into this newest installment of Battlefront, that it's certainly a good game. It's not a great game, however, and a reskinned battlefield with a true squad system and none of the immersion breakers present would have been a much better experience. While nostalgia seems to have truly colored our view of Pandemic's bold entries, there is no doubt that the inability to actually pilot a Republic transport ship over sprawling landscapes will truly be its downfall. I kid you not. I actually had a dream a few days ago of what the experience would be, and I logged onto the previous Battlefront before quickly realizing that it offered neither a narrative story or the clone era maps and troopers. The remake from my dream was amazing, and I can only hope that EA and DICE's announcements that they will fix this, and Disney's loud cry that they're here for the fans, ensure that one day I can call Battlefront 2 a masterpiece. While a game of this caliber did not need everything that's included here to at least muster an 8 out of 10, it needed to have its systems polished out of the gate, and Battlefront 2 certainly does not. Lest I forget the arcade mode that was perhaps the greatest afterthought in development, it isn't worth a purchase for only the single player content. It is welcome that one can tweak a few settings for the two modes of Onslaught and Team Battle, but they're set on much smaller versions of the main maps, many of which I've already stated have too tight of borders and general restrictions. Yavin 4 and Tatooine are standouts in my opinion, offering a slightly larger, less closed-in experience, but the rewards for arcade mode are middling unless you include the bearded hero skin for Han Solo, which you earn for completing a large assortment of milestones in single player. It isn't that great, but I earned it and felt at least some semblance of pride and accomplishment. I guess. Both modes allow you to set the amount of damage both you and the AI units can take, and whether certain units like heroes are available. However, the AI cannot use heroes at all, and all I can say about arcade mode is that I miss Walker Assault Skirmish mode from the original. In multiplayer, there are a couple other modes, Strike and the enjoyable but possibly unbalanced Heroes vs. Villains. But please, EA, bring back Walker Assault and Conquest on all modes and expand the playing field both in number of units and gameplay space. One other thing to mention is that there are a few technical issues this time around. Bugs and glitches that I feel should have been dealt with before the game's launch. I created a, vi a video about the very real lag and rubble banding issues I encountered while playing the game early through EA Access, and I've linked to them in the video description for your convenience. These issues span far and right, affecting both the PC and greater console audience. 
It is unfortunate that while the many promises that changes are coming remain in the air, no real fixes have been released to deal with the progression system or the incredibly odd issue of being unable to re replay past missions of the story campaign other than the first three. And at least for me, this has also prevented me from getting any of the new collectibles. It is with a heavy heart that I give Star Wars Battlefront 2 a 6 out of 10. So close to a 7 if just for a few issues being fixed and refined. But with the myriad of problems I and others are still currently encountering, I cannot recommend anyone buy it except the most passionate and patient fans. I'm enjoying my time with the game, but more and more with each passing day, I find it drifting from my memory. It is because of EA charging extra for early access to the 10 hour trial of EA Access and the deluxe edition purchases that microtransactions were shut down temporarily for launch day which likely would have been the most lucrative time for them. Without having the option to pay extra and play early, or being involved in content creation, none of us would have known just how bad the system was. And ultimately, the delicious irony is that marketing has failed on every aspect of this title's launch. EA's overconfidence was its weakness, and just like Luke, our faith in our friends was not ours. Star Wars Battlefront 2 was always pay to win. They allowed anyone early access for a price. And my 40 to 50 hours starting with the Oregon trial certainly gave me a huge advantage before others got their hands on the game. The microtransaction bubble may have officially popped by tying them so poorly to such a beloved and iconic universe. Hi, my name is Daniela. Thanks so much for checking out the first video in my new review series. If you adore reviews, I'm sure you'll find something to like here. If you didn't like the video, that's fine, no worries. Just click the dislike button below and maybe let me know in the comments how I messed up. If you enjoy my content, why not consider subscribing to the channel? I'm working to improve my content with every new video uploaded. Well, I hope you had a good time exploring Battlefront with me, and I hope to see you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Alright, bye bye. I see you following me. That's it. Stop as many bombers as you can. Shields are back online. Prevent the rebels from disabling the power clamps. Destroyer's reactor is on the brink of failure. Now is the time. Crush the 